Yep. Yep. So today we're going to go over the most effective uh, strategies for weight loss and body composition. These are the things that are kind of work for me. Um, so, you know, you can implement it yourself. Um, give it a shot. If you don't like it, don't use it. Um, and just keep giving it a shot and try new things, man. And that's how um, that's how it's all going to work. It's always tests and, and trial and error with, with weight loss. Uh -huh body composition and see how it works for you all right so quick overview man um so maintaining a healthy weight and optimal body composition is obviously crucial for overall health and well-being um excess weight in particular uh particularly fat increases the risk of you know chronic diseases heart disease uh, diabetes certain cancers and achieving a healthy weight and improving body composition overall uh, I guess lowers the risk of these cardiovascular problems and improved metabolic uh, health. Not only that, it gives us positive changes, makes us feel good when we look in the mirror, uh, and that contributes to you know body image perception and and all that stuff. And just your quality of life goes up, right? When you when you when you look at it, you're feeling good. You know, your whole quality of life goes up. Um, and all as an athlete as well, for athletes out there. You know, it's going to increase your movement. It's going to increase your mobility. So you're going to be able to move better. Your joint health is going to be better. Um, you're going to be able to be more bouncy because you've got less stress in your joints. I don't know about some of you. If you've lost five kilos, try to jump with a five kilo weight and see how that works out. So yeah, it's a big difference. So um, yeah. So what is next? We've got weight loss and body composition. So we've got to really understand, you know, what weight loss is. And the difference between weight loss and body composition. Um, so weight loss in general just refers to the reduction of overall body weight, um, while body composition refers to the proportion of fat, muscle, bone, and water in the body. So focusing solely on weight loss without considering body composition, uh, always, and this, you see this all the time with people going to do all these amounts of cardio, looking at the scales and going, I lost weight, not looking at anything to do with the kitchen, they end up losing a lot of muscle mass in this approach. So understanding, you know, the difference between weight loss and body composition is super important if you want to look the part pretty much. So um, obviously with that balanced approach, if we've got to increase uh, muscle mass, we're going to have a faster metabolism, increase, improve physical performance, and obviously again, a more aesthetically pleasing physique. So to understand, um, how it all works some of you might already know this but i think it's important to like understand the basics what is a calorie so calories is simply just a unit of measure used to quantify the energy content in food and drink of course but it actually means in scientific measurement it's a, a unit of energy equivalent to the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degrees all right. So that's, you know, we eat, you know, one gram of, of, of fat or something like that. It takes nine calories. So nine, uh, nine degrees to burn that fat. That's what a calorie is simple as that. So understanding that makes it super easy to go. Okay. If I eat this, my body takes this much to burn it. Simple as that. So the key to losing weight is obviously create a, de a calorie deficit. For those of you that don't know, um, a deficit occurs when you consume fewer calories than your body needs, uh, forcing us to use stored energy, all right? So a good place to start if you're looking to shed some excess weight or even trying to put on excess weight um, is to aim for a moderate deficit or surplus of 500 calories per day, all right? So you see some people doing these 1,000 calories restrictions, which can be super harmful um, and can have super... Uh, negative effects on metabolism and hormones. And you can see a lot of blokes that are in big deficits for a long time. If you go get their bloods done, they'll have this massive decrease in, in um, testosterone. A lot of them have very low testosterone just because they're smashing themselves into a deficit for so long. So what happens is, not to get into it too much, but hormones uh, come from fat. So we need to have fat there to create hormones. And if we don't have that, then guess what? We're taking it when we're in a deficit. That's generally why that happens, but there's a whole host of other factors. I won't go into it, but just be very wary that if you're in these massive deficits and you're in them for a long period of time, it can have serious impacts on your health. 
Um, so what do we do? So a good place to start is get like a, a tracking app, like my fitness pal or easy diet diary. If you work with me, I always get my clients on easy diet diary. And that just helps provide awareness and accountability. You know, you need to figure out where you're at. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you need 1800 calories to lose weight, right? 1800 calories, not much. 100 millimeters of olive oil. Guess how many calories that is? Anyone know? 100 mils. Anyone have an idea? No. 900, 900 calories, man. 900 calories, 100 mils of olive oil. If you need to lose, if you need 1800 calories to lose that body fat, 900 calories, that's half of your cal daily intake on oil, mate. And you cannot tell me that that filled you up more than, you know, 300 grams of, of potato and, and 300, 400 grams of steak and an egg. You know what I mean? So it's huge. And people don't notice the effect of that. So, you know, you're, you're putting a bit of uh, uh, olive oil on your salad, a little bit of olive oil on your dinner, cooking with it. And all of a sudden, you know, you've racked up 60, 70 mils of olive oil, man. You're smashing yourself into the ground before you even started putting anything on the board. So super important, that one. I like to leave that. Um, I love to put that in people's face because it really helps them realize. So another way you can think of it is think of calories as like a credit card, right? If you only add 18 hundred dollars on your credit card for the day and you had to go shopping for a few important items that say you know you like to eat nice food or you know comparison to that is like you know you like to wear fancy clothing so you go to louis vuitton or you go to gucci and without looking at the price for anything you just go there with your eighteen hundred dollar credit card and you go dick, dick, just tap tapping every shit like that boom 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 and all of a sudden right you've got no money you would never do that unless you're killing it but most of the time, most people out there are not going to do that. But we do that with our food. We go in there and we go to a nice restaurant and we eat all the steak we want. We eat that potato. We don't even look if it's covered in oil. Like we just go along mindlessly and just tapping our credit card on all these food items and just eating up like a pig, right? Like we're balling. But most of us are just driving our deficit into the ground, our surplus up, should I say, when we're trying to lose weight. So Super important because a lot of people focus so much on their health and they look in the mirror every day and they look at their body and they go, oh, what's going on here? But they don't want to put the work in. They don't actually meticulously look at what's coming into their mouth. So calories are the exact same thing as a credit card. So treat it the same, please. All right. Here's another example. So let's spot the difference between these two. Uh, let's say... Uh, Let's say, uh, for instance, take a comparison on the right, all right? One meal has almost 800 calories due to an extra slice of avocado and an additional teaspoon of sesame oil, you know? And then also an 80 grams worth of untrimmed steak that's been fried in oil. While the second version has only 400 calories because the steak is grilled and some of the noodles have been replaced with extra veg. That's it. That's all it's had. And there's 405 calories and 770 calories. Huge. Some is double, man. Just for some avocado. Like portion control is key with these fats. The next thing on your left, we can see that there shows two eggs and two egg whites scrambled with half an avocado on toast and a sliced apple, which amounts to just over 500 calories, right? But adding the rest of the avocado, two more eggs, and a spoonful of peanut butter more than doubles the calorie to over a thousand calories. Huge, man. And they look the same, man. I'd eat both of them and feel just as satisfied or unsatisfied, should I say. So, and you could probably even, you know, if you look at these two here, the 1,028 calories, you could probably remove some of those apples and add some egg whites and probably get those eggs even fuller. So I just think, I think that's mind blowing for a lot of people that are going to eat out. So making a very small tweak to your plate um, by holding out and serves and slightly larger portions or adding just a few supposedly extra ingredients can double the amount of calories you're consuming. Crazy. Um, so let's go into the nitty gritty. Macronutrients, what are they? So these are made up of proteins, carbohydrates and fats and alcohol. We'll just add it in there. And they're essential for body composition. So protein equals four calories per gram. So every gram of protein we eat equals four calories. You know, obviously protein supports muscle growth. 
um, and maintenance, while carbohydrates, um, they're four calories per gram as well. And they provide, I guess, energy for our, for our workouts and maintain muscle glycogen, which is kind of like stored energy in our muscle fats and liver. And then you've got fats. And they are nine calories per gram. They're super dense. So you've got to be super mindful with these. And they're important for hormone production and joint health. So there's only a certain amount of fat we actually need. Um, most, most of the research points to um, only having 0.68 grams per kilo body weight to be particular. So 0.7 grams per kilo body weight. So if you're 100 kilos, you only need 70 grams of fat. Right? There's no research out there that, that I'm aware of that shows anything more than 70 grams per per fat per hundred uh, per gram of fat. So let's say, for example, you know, you're 50 grams, you're 50 kilos, mate, you only need 35 grams of fat. Fuck all. But people can um really smash that. You know, I think what I think uh what's what's a hundred grams of of peanut butter, you're gonna smash that. Two eggs or what, 12, 12 grams of fat, you know, so it adds up quick, fats and everything. Um, additionally, alcohol consumption has a obviously physical and mental consequence um, that should be considered into relation to body composition. So going out on the weekend and and having a couple of having a couple of brewskis is going to have a, an impact, obviously, on your calorie intake. So be careful with that. Um, yeah. So out of all those, the most important one is protein. All right, you've heard it before. It's, why is it so important? You hear all these people out there, and they're like, oh. You know, I want to get a big booty. You know, girls, a lot of girls are, are renowned for this. They they go there and they, they go to the gym and they're doing all these hip thrusts and they're just smashing their booty and, you know, props to them. You know, some of them can lift some weight. But they go home and they eat nothing and they're in a calorie deficit all the time and they're looking in the mirror trying to get their booty bigger. But it's almost the equivalent of you going like 20 blokes working at a construction site trying to about to set up for a slab and they're setting up all this form work, working hard, working all the, you know, doing all this work, but you know, they got the hammers out, drilling shit, screwing stuff. And then there's no cement. There's not enough cement to make the concrete slab. So they're working their asses off, but there's no cement. And if there's no cement, there's no slab being built. So you can work as hard as you want. But if you don't have the cement there, guess what? You're not getting it built. Just like if there's no protein there, you're not building that booty. All right, super important. It is crucial macronutrient. It you know, obviously you need it to achieve ideal body composition. It supports muscle growth. It boosts metabolism. It controls appetite. It aids in muscle recovery. Um, so there are no other macronutrient that actually helps build muscle or repair muscle. So if you don't have protein, say goodbye to your muscle mass, mass simple as that. So when you are tracking, aim for at least 1.8 to 3 grams per kilo of body weight per day. And obviously, depending on gender and training goals, uh, that will vary. But personally, I eat 2.5 to 3 grams per kilo of day. And that seems to maintain my muscle mass and build muscle mass. All right. So some good sources of, of protein are, you know, you got your eggs, you got your lean meats, you got your poultry, you got your fish, you know, you got your turkey, that's on the poultry, uh, legumes, tofu, and obviously protein powder if you don't have any. So prioritizing protein intake will enhance your body composition and help you get that physique. No doubt about it, man. Um, so here's a cool study I, I wanted to talk about and it, and it talks about the importance of sleep, right? Sleep is key. So this study aimed to investigate the effects of sleep on energy intake and energy expenditure and body composition. So it got 12 healthy non-obese individuals and they participated in a 21 day study with randomized sleep restriction so four hours of sleep opportunity and the control group had nine hours of sleep opportunity so the results showed that sleep restriction led to increased calorie intake and specifically higher protein and fat consumption while energy expenditure remained unchanged participants gained more weight during sleep restriction compared to control sleep Although total body fat did not differ significantly, abdominal fat increased significantly, including both subcutaneous, which is like the outside layer, and visceral fat. And that's the fat that surrounds your organs. That shit's the stuff that gets you all those nasty diseases I spoke about earlier. 
These findings really suggest that sleep restriction combined with unrestricted food intake promotes any excess energy intake and predisposes to abdominal visceral obesity. So get your sleep in, not to mention, mention the amount of fatigue that develops and the amount of bad decisions that come with no sleep. If you're not giving yourself a nine hour window to get to sleep, if you want to change the way you look, you better start doing that because that is key. I've had, you know, personal experiences where I haven't slept for, you know, I've only had like five, six hours sleep. And I'll tell you what, I'll eat my house down <laughs> uh, and make the worst decisions. Um, the next one I want to talk about, super important, prep your shit. So many people out there are just grabbing food and looking at food mindlessly. It is crazy. So meal planning, preparing off, offers super super benefits. I can't even go on any more about it. It's like the first and foremost thing. You, you might not think it's important, but man, it just sets you up. And it goes back to that sleeping talking about earlier. It's like, if you are going to make bad decisions, if you're meal prep, that can avoid that from happening. So um, not only is it time saving uh, by pairing meals in advance, you can avoid the daily hassle of cooking and decision making. Um, additionally, meal planning and preparing for uh, preparing uh, portion control. It prevents overeat, overeating, um, aiding in weight loss efforts, uh, enables you to achieve nutritional balance because you can actually see what's going in throughout the week. You know, I'm having enough veg, I'm having enough steak, I'm having enough, you know, salmon or whatever it is. So you get a well-rounded diet and you can have all your nutrients and make sure you're getting them in. Um, another advantage is environmental control. I'm a massive one of environmental control. Um, by preparing your meals at home, you leave kind of that full control of your ingredients, your portion controls, I mean, cooking methods, you know, you know, someone's not going to come and grab your food and smash it in oil to make it taste good. So you come back, um, allows you to make way healthier choices and obviously reduces your increase of processed foods because you're just not going to put processed foods in your meal plan. You're, you're prepping, you've been organized. It just is super helpful. And the environmental controls important, man, because there's a lot of times where, you know, it, me personally, where there's nothing in the house and I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to eat whatever's easier because it's too hard to go and make a meal. You know, changing that is super important because it takes one meal to fuck everything up for the day or the week, even in that sense. Um, the next thing is tracking and measuring. So weighing in and taking photos in particular this stuff is necessary. You need to monitor your progress. It's crucial for staying super motivated, making the necessary adjustments to your weight loss and body composition goals. Um, it provides you with evidence of your achievement and helps identify any areas that may require improvement, whether it's through traditional methods like weighing yourself or taking progress photos or utilizing tracking apps such as uh, nutrition apps or the Easy Diet Diary app. Um, you have various tools to measure progress. And these tools are super helpful because it allows you to track changes in body weight, obviously, um, body measurements and food intake, which I said before is non-negotiable. You have to be tracking your food to make any sort of real progress, especially if you want to hit down to those 6%, 8% body fat. So by consistently monitoring and measuring your progress, you can stay accountable, you can make informed decisions and you can celebrate all your milestones throughout the way. Tracking, super important. So in conclusion, tracking your progress is obviously crucial for effective weight loss um, and achieving optimal body composition. By monitoring measures like weight, body fat, and body measurements, you can stay motivated and make necessary adjustments to your nutrition and exercise routines. Additionally, prioritizing sleep, implementing meal planning strategies, and ensuring adequate protein intake are, are essential for reaching your goals. Remember, consistent and mindful calorie intake are key factors in successful weight man management. By integrating these practices into your lifestyle, you can make meaningful progress towards a healthier, fitter you. And that is it for the presentation. If you need any help with coaching, obviously send me a buzz. Um, if anyone got any questions, holler out now and I'm happy to go over them um, and answer anything that anyone's got to say. No. Hey, bro. Quick question for me. Yeah, that's okay. Um, let's go, bro. Um, just in terms of like the oils we use, you said like a hundred mils of oil. 
olive oil is probably 900 calories. Um, so in terms of portion control, like what are we substituting these oils for? And also I'm guilty of like, because I'm, I, I, as you know, bro, you've, you've programmed me and we've tracked my calories. I'm trying to put on lean mass. So like when I go to eat, you show those examples of difference in eggs and stuff. Like I'll smash out six eggs, three bunches of Chinese broccoli, um, obviously not separating yolk and egg whites. So I just wanted to know what would be a smarter way to cook, obviously these foods and what kind of oils I should be using. Yeah. Good question, man. Um, bro, to be honest, man, I never use oils. Like never, especially to cook with. As soon as you cook with it, a lot of the nutrients you actually lose. A lot of them turn into saturated. When you cook with oils, you said. When you cook the oil, like even like you get good olive oil, which is uh -huh. good, like great mono uh, mono unsaturated fat. Uh -huh. Um, but as soon as you cook it, it becomes saturated. So what do we do? Heating uh -huh. your pan up, right, hot enough, and you got a non sick pan works a treat. Uh -huh. If you, I made this mistake. I actually learned how to do this inside, man. <laughs> I used to always just like put oil in and then one day we had a non-stick pan. I'm like, how does this work? And here I am, turn the pan on and put my food straight in and uh -huh. fix the pan. I'm like, what's going on here, man? <laughs> and then someone comes up to me, some old boobhead comes up to me and says, oh, you got to keep it hot. And I'm like, yeah, I kept it hot, man. <laughs> I made these eggs, they were smooth as butter, man. I slipped them off. I was just like mind blown about, about heat. So heat your stuff up. Um, the next thing, if, if that doesn't work and you're using the oven, you know, my chicken, I'll just get foil and get a baking tray. Uh-huh. Bake that stuff. All right. So I'll just put a baking, uh, put oil, uh, foil on my baking tray, put my chicken on the on the baking tray and chuck that straight in the oven. Now, if you still want juice and you want to get it juicy, you know, you can use water, use balsamic vinegar. There's heaps of stuff you can do. But if you need to use oil, obviously the non-stick oil is a plan. Otherwise, measure it out, man, and take the hit. But just make sure. Nah, I, I fuck. I, I don't want to use oil now. <laughs> All right. Um. So you're saying so pretty much heat the pan up to its hottest, and then cook the like use the oil. Then that's what you're saying, or put it in the oven on top of the oil. bacon. You don't need oil once it's at once it's at a certain degree. Yeah. Um, it actually will oh. just, it should just come. Tell me. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. I see what you're saying. So yeah. when it's at a certain temperature already, yeah, it can ease. Okay. Okay. Correct. Perfect. So All right. if if something's cold and something's cold and they heat up together, they stick. So if you if you have a non-stick pan and you get it that shit hot as man, and then you put your food on, so wait five minutes, just wait five minutes, and then put your food on it, it won't stick. All right, cool. And in <laughs> terms of <laughs> and in terms of um, because I use the charcoal barbecue a lot. So the only thing I cook on a pan is actually the chicken, right? Mm -hmm. So for my say my lamp or my steaks, like what do I mix it? If I'm doing dry herb, there's no olive oil on the meat. Do I just put it on the charcoal barbecue just like that? If there's no uh can you put it on I'm not sure how charcoal barbecue works. Is that just like a barbecue outside? Yeah, just a barbecue outside, bro. The grill heats up because and there's heated coal underneath. So I pretty much yeah. heat the coal. I put so it can you just put foil? Can you put foil down? Uh, no, foil will burn like quick. It doesn't stick on it though, does it? Uh, oh, I, I can try. Yeah, I guess corn hasn't stuck before in the foil. Okay. Yeah, check if it sticks, and if it does, then man, just maybe lather it up with like you know maybe just give it a quick spray. Um, okay, cool. And just wear Beautiful. it. Up. And then no oil again, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to unless, you know. All right, perfect. Yeah, you All right, thanks. To, man. Um, especially if it's non-stick. And, you know, when you, where you can use foil, use foil. Man, it makes cleaning a lot easier. You know, I tried to cook skewers on the grill once and I, just, I was cleaning it for like two hours. I was like, this yeah. is not worth my time. I could have went to a five-star restaurant and got this shit cooked. Yeah. <laughs> my time, man. So. Okay, cool. And in terms of the eggs real quick before I go, before you go, um, so I have to separate whites and yolks is that is that what um don't have to you just it's all about measuring man like you know going back it's all about like staying within your your limits man like if you're trying to okay. cut up man um uh -huh. yolks are super good for you um but you know obviously having three four yolks are you kind of pushing it a little bit probably unnecessary right two yolks one yolk yeah i have two yolks every day man but it's like what are your goals, man? And uh -huh. do you
do you need to be having it that much? Like, probably not. All so right. For me, so, I'll punch out like 10 egg whites and two yolks. That's what I, that's okay. So that's more like for me as well. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Easy. It's super dense. Right. I think the, uh, uh, egg whites are like 15 calories and the yolks like 50, 55, man. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, it's crazy. So I'll just smash them whites, man. All right. Beautiful. All right, man. Thanks so much for today also. No, no worries, man. Anytime. Hopefully I'll get another one next week, man. And keep providing yeah. that as a value, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to head to the gym. So good luck with everything. Good luck with your ankle, bro. Thanks, bro. Peace, peace. Yeah, man. Hey, Jem, you get any questions, my boy? Mm. Nah, bro. He pretty much uh, actually had exactly the same question because as soon as you mentioned oil, um, I'm kind of on that same train where I use olive oil, but um, yeah, it's it's not really needed. I just think it's like I can't be fucked cleaning it really intensely when I'm washing up. So I'm like, yeah, yeah I'll just use oil, but it's it's definitely good to know, bro. Yeah, what? so what have you been cooking with at the moment? Like, have you just been cooking chicken on the pan or...? No, nah, this is more so for, for, for breakfast because I smash like um like eggs daily and stuff like that and mixed mushrooms and everything. But it was more so I um you actually train one of my uh friends, uh Ray Roller Rod. Ah, um, awesome. Yeah, he's a big Yeah, yeah. And I've uh I've seen um yeah, a couple of vids out, man, and the, the next step I guess for me is kind of taking care of that visceral fat and all the like the massive um gut that i've got pretty much yeah, um exactly. so yeah i just just want to get a little bit more info man but yeah appreciate the um yeah the info it's always good like once you give out value for free it kind of like solidifies the um yeah the knowledge that you got and yeah it was good it was good man Thanks, bro. appreciate it man i just want to hopefully keep giving out content it's just yeah i want to get more people on board like you know jumping on these on these webinars and and just keep talking shit with people man hopefully i can help people like yourself man that makes my day so um yeah, any other yeah. questions bro just send me a dm man and i'm happy to happy to answer them bro 100 percent, man yeah i um I'll, I'll probably reach out uh yeah once i get everything structured like i've got the my fitness pal and stuff like that but i think getting the routine that's probably the biggest uh like meal plan doing yeah. like counting everything it's like it's <laughs> it's like another job Obviously, you know, because it's half your job as well. Is, but you know what, yeah. man? It gets it gets easier, bro. Like if you use like, let's say I use Easy Diet Diary. When I use that, every time I put something in there, it saves. So then it yeah. becomes like you end up eating like the same 10 meals over and over again, but they're all saved there. So like, oh, you know, one meal might be, you know, eggs on ciabatta with fucking garlic sauce and I don't know, a steak whatever yeah that yeah once it might be 650 place. calories right yeah. at the start i have to put it all in but i save it as a recipe and then every time i have that i just go boom done boom yeah then you just know sometimes i have like a 650 a 700 and an 800 and i'm done you know what i mean if that makes sense yeah yeah you can pretty much like that that's pretty sick because you could set up your day and you're just like yeah i know i'm in a deficit of like 800 calories for for today um like that's that's sorted stuff yeah, like that man super super helpful once you get the once you understand your foods and what they're worth and then you start yeah. to analyze their protein content it's like is this going to give me high protein is this fat's not going to be too high you know and if you can keep doing that with all your meals and you find them all pretty nutritional as well man you are on the right wicket man yeah that sounds good bro um yeah once again thanks appreciate it nice. and um i'll definitely reach out directly and um yeah get some Get some more gold nuggets from your brain. Anytime, Jim. I'll speak to you yeah. soon, buddy. Thanks, bro. Take care. Bye. Peace.